Hi everyone, welcome to the Knitting Turnpike. Welcome to the Knitting Term Pike. My name is Gina Pike. I'm so very happy that you're here with me today. Today we're going to be doing the stitch tutorial for the Miss May shawl. Um, you guys know that I'm currently starting this today. The first clue just came out. I was super, super excited. I was trying to guess how she was going to get us started on this, and it looks like we're going to be doing an I-cord cast on. Um, I have a short... Uh, I have a different way I like to do an I-cord cast on, so I'm going to be showing you that that in the stitch tutorial, and then I'm going to show you all the stitches that we have in this uh, the abbreviations, the stitch section here. So if uh, you are knitting this, you can use this as a guide. If you are considering knitting this, you can look at the stitches here and see if there's something you think you might be able to do. Uh, she is just starting right out with some lace, uh, so. Uh, uh, there are charts for some of the uh, later sections, but everything is written out row by row, so you can uh, go line by line, check it off as you go with the stitch counts um, at the end of each row. So you can double check your work, which is really, really nice. Not a lot of designers will do that. Uh, but let's get started. Um, since we are doing an I-cord cast on, I'm going to show you that first. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a... This cast on, this I cord cast on um, for this shawl. I kind of have a tip and tricks. I like to start out with DPNs. I'm using US6 GPNs um, because uh, for I cords, um, there's a lot of slipping your stitches back and forth between your needles. Um, and I just prefer to do DPNs. So I hope this is helpful to you guys. If you do have not have DPNs and just are using a circular needle, just pass your stitches back and forth carefully between your stitches. Sorry, I'm just getting into it. All right, you're going to do it. Uh, it says cast on three stitches doing a um, long tail cast on. I don't ever start with a slip knot. I always just take my yarn and twist it. And then to do a long tail cast on, you have over two fingers. And then you come under this finger, go around and through. And then you come, I do it again, come under, around, and through. I think I have a tutorial for long tail cast on. If I do, I will link it above. There are a million of them already on the internet if that was too fast for you. Um, then you want to take a little pin and put it through these three stitches to help you find them later. Just like that. You can use any type of little pen stitch marker you have. All right, so there you go. Um, it looks like this. This is where you are. Now, at this point, it says it tells you to pass the stitches back to the left hand needle, like this. So you do it purl wise. So you go into the, your stitch, like you're going to purl it, and just slip it back to the left hand needle and then you knit the three stitches. I'm gonna show you both ways, okay? So that was that's how the pattern tells you how to do it. And you want to grab your working yarn, not your not the yarn that's the, t the, the end you're gonna weave in. So make sure you grab your working yarn. I've done that many times, grab the wrong end. Getting starting, started is always fiddly, and try not, these ne needles are not the, Pointiest. Okay, try not to stress about it if it's not exactly perfect because you're going to be blocking these. So knitting stitches, sorry, I should be explaining this. To knit a stitch, you insert your needle into the front leg of your stitch, wrap your yarn around it, pull it through. You're just knitting these three stitches. And it's creating an eye cord because you had slipped them back to the left hand needle. So that's after after the first row. And you have three stitch counts. So what I like to do, so the reason why I like to use a DPN is instead of slipping them back to the right hand, the left hand needle like I showed you, like this, 
I like to just slide it. It works the same way. So if you slide it to the other end, you just, that's my working yarn. I mean my tail end, so you, then you just knit the three stitches. So you slide and knit. You don't have to slide, slip any stitches off and risk dropping them. This is already kind of fiddly anyway. So there we go. That's row two. Do it again, slide it down, or transfer them back, knit the three stitches again. You can see the I cord starting to take shape. All right. Now we'll transfer them back to the left hand needle or slide it if you're on a DPN and knit. And I'll transfer this once I start getting, and once I get through this I cord cast on. I'll transfer this to my regular needle to uh, get this going. Okay, there we go. Uh, let's see. All right, one more time. Transfer back either that way or slide it down and knit those stitches. All right, there you go. Now you can see the I cord really taking shape there. All right, so now we're on row, the next part where you take your work, it's like this. You turn your work clockwise, so clockwise. And now you're looking at your I cord like this. You have your tail, um, your original stitches are on the left and your three stitches on your right hand needle. And what you're going to do is you're going to take this and turn it and you're going to look at your eye cord and you're going to try to pick up three stitches from this section. And what I see, if I can hold this and point at the same time and focus everything, all right, what I see is this. One, two, three. And you're going to pick up both legs of those, under both of those legs right there. So like... All right, camera, like that. And the first one will be right here. And you're gonna pick up both of those legs, pick up a stitch under both of those legs. Can you see that? There we go. And there's three of those that you're gonna pick up. So your work is turned. I like to do this with my right hand needle. Just insert it under, just insert it under both of those legs. Again, this is a little fiddly, so you just work it the best you can. You have to kind of twist and turn. All right, so you got the under both of those legs. I'm gonna pick up a stitch, just like that. I hope you saw that. Okay. Let's do it again. So we're gonna pick up this next stitch under both of these legs here, like that. Wrap your yarn around it, pull it through. Now you have five stitches on your needle. And then you gotta do that one more time. So I'm gonna do it. Right there. Wrap it around, pull it through, and then you've got six stitches on your needle. Then you're going to go to these original stitches here, and that's why you put the pin in there. Tell you what, let me pull this through. Maybe that out of the way will be easier to see. All right, so you have your original three stitches on your needle. All 
All right, see those three stitches? Now I'm just going to, you turn your work again, pick up those stitches, and just knit those three stitches. It's like I split my yarn right there. Okay, that's better. And now that might be split a little bit too. three and there you go now you're done that's the cast on now you're ready to get started with the shawl you should have nine stitches you should three here three here and three there and that is your the next row is a wrong side row and I'm gonna transfer to my to my needles now that I'm done with my DPMs part of having that I-cord cast on is you want to maintain that I-cord along the edges of your shawl. To, it's going to put a nice finished edge on your shawl. Uh, something like this. This is the I-cord here at the bottom. You can see how the I-cord is continuing along the edge and it looks just really nice and finished. Um, to continue that on this at, along the sides, you have to do three stitches on each side. Um, so you, you, on the right side, you'll do a knit, stitch, knit, I'm sorry, knit, slip stitch, knit, and I'm going to show you that. So for the right side, the edge stitches, you're going to do a knit, slip, knit. So you knit the stitch, just like you always do. You bring your working yarn to the front, slip it purlwise with the working yarn in front, then you Take your working yarn to the back and knit the third stitch. And that's the knit, slip, knit. I'll show you at the other edge. Whoops. I'll show you at the other edge. And then now we're going to do the last three stitches again, which are the edging. And we're on the right side. So we're going to do a knit, slip, knit. You're going to knit the first stitch. The slip stitch is done purlwise with the working yarn in front. And then you knit the last stitch. And that's this is what it looks like. And you can see the eye cord starting to take shape along the, the edges. On the wrong side, for those three edge stitches, you have to do a slip, knit, slip stitch. All right, so the next side is a wrong side row. I'm gonna grab my needles. And the first thing you're going to do is you're going to define these edges here. You're going to continue the I cord edge along the edge. You're going to, on the wrong side rows, you're going to do what's called a slip knit slip stitch. So you, you this, you're going to slip it purl wise. So you insert it like you're going to purl. You're working yarns in front and you just slip it like that. Tighten it up a little bit. Take your working yarn to the back. Insert it as if to knit the next stitch. Bring your working yarn back to the front. Insert your stitch as if to purl and slip it purl wise again. And then take your working yarn to the back. And that's the slip, knit, slip, purl. And then these slip stitches are done purl wise, which is why you have the purl, the yarn in front like a purl bump. Now you're to the slip, knit, slip again. And slip it purlwise with the yarn in front, knit, slip it purlwise, there you go. You're defining the I cord edging on each side, that's why you're doing the slip, knit, slip, and the knit, slip, knit. You knit, slip, knit on the front, and you slip, knit, slip on the back. And you can see how it's going to carry the I cord edging. These are going to be the eye cords, and you can see how it's going to run along the edge of your shawl. And this is going to be the part that increases for your shawl. 
but you can see the I chord starting to be defined right there along the edge. This is the right side. I already kind of have those three stitches already defined and it's kind of on this side so I'm just going to leave that and let that be my right side marker. Um, but it is probably good to mark the right side with a pin stitch marker if you do not have something like that. I also am going to next row I'm going to uh, put stitch markers um, in front of my edge stitches even though there's only three of them. It just sometimes help you re helps you remember after you're you know when you get to them oh those are the edge. Here's a t short tutorial on how to do the knit stitch. Next. A knit stitch, you insert your yarn like this, wrap it around, pull it through, yarn over, knit, yarn over, knit. Do a yarn over stitch, which is a way to add uh, interesting holes and open up your knitting to add lace. Alright, um, this is a yarn over stitch. You're going to take your working yarn to the front and over that right hand needle. Again, it's just like that. And then you do whatever is next. And here's how to do knit one through the back loop. Alright, to knit through the back loop, you insert your your knitting needle into the back leg and because and, normally you would just do it through the front leg you put it through the back leg wrap your yarn around your needle pull it through and it orients your stitch a lot a little bit differently it's kind of twisted here's how to do the knit front and back then to do a knit front and back you insert your right hand needle into the front leg like this and do not pull it off the left hand needle yet insert it into the back of that same stitch like this and knit it so you knit through the front and the back it looks like this let me tighten it up a little bit because that was into a yarn over but you have the knit stitch and the back and the you have your one stitch becomes two. It's an increased stitch, and that's what, and you can see how it. The second stitch always has like a little bump in front of it. Here's how to do knit two together. To knit two together, I just had a short tutorial on this. You take the next two stitches on your knitting needle, insert your right hand needle through both of the front legs, wrap your yarn around it, pull it through both of the stitches. It's a right leaning decrease, two stitches become one. It looks like that. Uh, the purl stitch, here's how to do the purl stitch. And then you're gonna purl this. To do a purl stitch, you insert your stitch into the front leg like this, wrap your yarn around it, pull it through. Now, and here's how to do purl one through the back loop. Purl one through the back loop. Okay, if you're going to do that, when you purl, you bring your working yarn to the front. You will be coming, turn your needle like this. And you come through the back leg like this and purl it. So you wrap your yarn around it like this and pull it through like this. And off the needle and that's what a, this is what a purl through the back loop looks like it'll have a bump in front of it because it's a purl stitch and it'll be twisted here's how to do there's two decreased two interesting decrease stitches and with a variation on them this one the first one is a an s2 kp it means you're going to slip two stitches together as if you're going to knit them knit the next stitch and pass the two slip stitches over this is more of a centered decrease stitch. But you're still taking three stitches down to one. Stitch. Let's do a slip two, knit, pass the slip stitch over. You're gonna slip the, these two stitches, that the next two stitches on your needle together. This first, the second stitch will become the first stitch over here. 
then you knit the next stitch and you take that those two stitches and pass them up and over and off your knitting needle like this and it looks like that and you take three stitches down to one that's a slip two knit past the two slip stitches over. Two stitches are decreased. The other type of decrease is called an SK2P stitch. You're still taking three stitches down to one, but this one is a left leaning decrease. So you will slip the first stitch, knit the next two stitches together, pass that slip stitch over that first stitch. All right, another decrease stitch that you have in this shawl is a slip one stitch knit one. It's a slip knit two past the slip stitch over. So you slip one stitch knit wise, then you knit the next two stitches together on your left hand needle, and then you take that slip stitch and pass it up and over and off that stitch. It's the same thing. You take three stitches down to one, but it is a left leaning decrease. See how it leans to the left? Whereas the other one was more centered. Here's a little tutorial on slip stitching. When you slip stitch, in this instance, it looks like we're slipping on purl wise. You, do, you can either do it with a yarn to the front, you can do it to the yarn to the back. When you're doing it purl wise with the yarn to the front, you do it like this, bring your yarn to the back for whatever stitches, or if you purl in, you leave it in the front. It will create a bump in front of that. Or you can always slip your stitch knit wise like this, where you insert it as if to knit and just slip it. The SSK is another decrease stitch where you take two stitches down to one. But you slip two stitches to get you slip two stitches one at a time, knit those two stitches to, together through the back loop. That's how I like to do it, and it makes it lean to the left. SSK, this is how I like to do it. You slip two stitches one at a time, knit wise. So you slip this knit wise, slip that knit wise. So you do them separately, slipping, and that's to keep that second stitch oriented in the in the back of it. Then you ins you knit them together through the back loop. Like that. And that's what a slip slip knit looks like. It's a decrease stitch that leans to the left. There are multiple ways to do that. I have a video for that. I will link it up above if you're interested in alternate ways on how to do a slip slip knit. But that's the way I like to do it. Um, takes two stitches down to one. Now we have a cable, some cabling stitches, very simple cables. These are one stitch cables, so you're just really dealing with two stitches. You're taking one stitch either to the front, which would make a left leaning uh, cable, or one stitch to the back, which would make a right leaning cable. So I'm going to show you how to do. There's, there's instructions for both ways, where if you use a, uh, a cable needle or a DPN to hold your stitch to the front or back, and then there's the way to do it without taking your stitches off the uh, left hand needle to knit them and I've shown that many times here on my channel but I'm going to show you both ways the first one is the right cable cable stitches I'm going to show you how to do them two ways uh, these are simple I've shown these cable stitches before I have tutorials already on my site on how to do them both ways but this is a right, the RC cable, you take one stitch, hold it to the back, because it says R, it's going to go to the back to make the stitch, the, make the cable lean to the right. You knit the next stitch on your knitting needle, and then you knit the stitch that's being held to the back off your DPN or cable needle, and it causes a right leaning cable. Like that. You can see how it's leaning to the right right there. See that? Alright, another way to do this is if you don't have a cable needle, you can just go into that second stitch, knit it, then go into the first stitch and knit it. Do not, you know, not take it off and then 
take it off, then take it off, and you can see that's a right landing cable as well. And now we'll take a look at the left cable. Now we're going to do a left landing cable. Um, you put the first stitch on your DPN or cable needle, whatever you're using. Hold it to the front because it's going to lean to the left. You knit the next stitch on your left needle. And then you knit the stitch off your cable needle. And it will cause it to lean to the left. Like this. See how it's leaning to the left right there? Okay, the way to do it for without a cable needle is you're going to go come around and behind this stitch like this. Knit the second stitch like this. And then knit the first stitch. And it will cross the same way. It'll be a left leaning cable. And those are two different ways, one with and one without. She defines both of them in the instructions just as well. And those are all the stitches that you need for this this uh, first clue for this shawl. I don't know if we'll have any more new stitches or if these are all the stitches that you'll need. Um, there are alternate instructions for the cabling if you are uncomfortable with that. And that, my friends, are all the stitches for clue one, maybe for the whole shawl. I don't know. Um, she is, uh, I will say this about the coloring. Uh, she's talking about doing color blocks, but she does also mention you can do gradients. Uh, you can also just do a one color shawl. Um, but for the color blocks, she said something about how... Um, the first color is also going to be the edging color, uh, so that's probably why she started with her darkest color. That's kind of what she detailed on the pattern page. So think about that. What color, if you're doing a four color shawl, what color would you like to start with and maybe finish your shawl with and let that be your color A and then the rest of them, put them in the order that you really want them to be color B, C, D, or if you're doing three colors, you don't have to worry about that. I'm sorry, if you're doing one color, you don't have to worry about that. I was thinking three schemes. Um, and if you're doing a gradient, you don't have to worry about that either. But um, just think about that and let's get started. I hope that you guys don't have any questions, but if that any of my instructions are not clear, please put a comment down below or email me and I can try to help you through it. And um, otherwise, have a wonderful day. Have fun getting started on this clue one. And um, I just hope you just enjoy this knitting. Enjoy the process. There is no rushing. She even said it in the email she sent with the pattern. No rushing. No stressing. There's plenty of time to do this. So take your time and enjoy it. And enjoy the process of knitting. And it's supposed to be stress relieving. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for watching these tutorials and knitting this along with me. I hope, I hope to see you all very, very soon. All right, take care. Bye-bye.